All right, so number four in these psychology bites. Um, right, so this is about changing attitudes, um, and this time, instead of persuasive communication theory, although that becomes part of it, um, we're going to focus on a process called cognitive dissonance. Um, this is where two beliefs uh, contradict each other and puts the, the performer in a sense of imbalance, is another word for, for dissonance. Okay, so the way it looks is this. We remember the triadic model of attitudes. Um, an attitude is formed in three parts. We have the cognitions, the, the thoughts, the beliefs, uh, that cognitive element of the attitude. That's um, added to or supported by the affective element, which is the feelings of the individual towards the attitude object. Um, and then we have the resulting behavior, okay? So uh, cognitions plus feelings and emotions, the affective elements equals the behavior. Um, so a practical example of that could be um, that the cognitions, the, the thought process around fitness training is that fitness training is not important. It's not, it's not something um, that, that's going to improve my gain. Um, in addition, we have the, the feelings that fitness training um, produces uh, and, and the performer doesn't enjoy the, the fitness training. And as a result, um, that's likely or very likely to, to equal a lack of effort or maybe even a lack of attendance um, at specific fitness training um, sessions, pre-season, whatever it might be, or even when you just change the activity and you do something that's a bit more physically demanding, um, people may may reject that um, because their cognitions, their beliefs tell them it's not important and they don't enjoy it. So we have this idea then of cognitive dissonance and it uses the uh, the knowledge of the coach of the triadic model, okay, the, this model that's in front of us on the screen. And once we understand that, it's quite easy to, to see where the roots of behavior come from and they come from what the performer believes. So let's just say we, we create another um, thought process, another cognition, another belief about fitness training. And this comes through um, the coach usually and the persuasive communication uh, theory that we looked at last time. So let's take away that, that initial um, belief and try and replace it with um, an evidence-based belief. Uh, whether that evidence is true or not, is not entirely important because we're talking about young players who are quite impressionable. But I'm sure that the, if most of our young players could get themselves properly fit, um, it would have a 20% increase um, in terms of their performance. And if we were to, to explain this to um, our players, that look, this fitness training is hard work, but um, we, we see a significant improvement in performance when players eat healthily and when players get enough sleep and when players train properly and warm up before training and matches and so on, we see those additional benefits. That then changes the, the feeling around fitness training from a, a, a quite plain, I don't enjoy it, to potentially a, a slightly different feeling. Because every young player is likely to like the idea of being a better player, formed from the belief or the cognition that fitness training might give them a 20% boost. And as a result, that, that lack of effort, that original behavior, now becomes um, a slightly different thought, uh, a slightly different attitude, where the performer's saying, look, take me to the hills, where is that hill? I'm prepared to do the fitness training. Now it doesn't necessarily say that they're going to love fitness training forever. But what it does say is that instead of trying to offer incentives around the behavior, which could influence how they feel about fitness training, get to the root of the issue first and show them the, the evidence that might change their mind. You're a coach, they trust you. The evidence that you give them should be grounded in, in honesty and integrity and as much accuracy as, as you can. But find that information out and, and share that knowledge with them as you're trying to change the attitude to a positive one.